Miami isn't scared to turn up the heat, and they're letting the NBA know. While there's plenty of drama between teams and even players on the same team, the NBA sometimes gets involved in fights, and then you know things are about to get real. While the NBA may have gotten into this situation, can it handle the consequences? Watch this video to find out. First up, that's a big bill. The National Basketball Association periodically issues fines to teams and players, but it's always in the interest of keeping things fair and punishing actions that might hurt others. Well, almost always. This is one of those exceptions. The association fined Miami Heat $25,000 on December 14th. Their crime? They violated league injury rules. Each team must report an accurate number of players available to play for each game. If a player is out due to an injury, it must let the NBA and the opponent know about it before the game. Miami didn't abide by the rules, so they delivered them a big bill for their negligence. We get that rule violations need to be taken seriously, but like, was this really necessary? Coming from the same organization that ignored problematic owners and coaches for years, this is a bit surprising. Well, at least we know now what they clearly care about more. The Heat decided that it'll answer fire with fire, or in this case, pettiness with pettiness. For their next game against the San Antonio Spurs, they served the NBA a taste of their own medicine. They put the entire team on the injury report. Wow, now that's what you call petty. But like, can you blame them? The NBA had it coming. This is isn't the first time they've pulled a controversial move, though. Next up, that's a stern stance. Coaches frequently rest their players before games. There are 82 games in the regular season, and sometimes it's just impossible. Many teams rest their star players if the opposing team isn't too big, but the NBA has a problem with that. Back in 2012, in a game against Miami Heat, the San Antonio Spurs chose to rest four of its starters. It was an early season game, and coach Greg Popovich thought it was best if they caught a break. But the commission at that time, David Stern, handed them a $25,000 fine. Yeesh, that's harsh. Turns out he didn't like the fact that they were taking an early season game this easy. They lost the match by only a few points, but Stern wasn't happy. To make the game entertaining and competitive, he had to make sure that teams don't even think about doing this again. As expected, no one was happy. The team owners were already annoyed by him. The Spurs were chastised, and other coaches felt like they had no authority. Though there have been calls to reduce the normal 82-game season so that players don't get burned out. The organization is most concerned about the green bills to take those calls seriously. Instead, they've brought in-season tournaments that make little sense and don't solve the problem. Will they ever learn to listen? Our best guess is no. Coming up, make it rain. An in-game season makes about as much sense as the rest of the stuff the league does, but we're still having trouble wrapping our heads around the concept. Basically, everything will be normal, except it won't be normal at all. During the regular season, teams will play for the in-season tournament simultaneously. These games will take place in November. The top eight teams will advance to the single elimination round, but the rest of the team will continue to play regular games in the background as well. Then, the top two teams will go head-to-head -head in a final. All games are part of the normal 82-game season except the final. Got it? Now, if you're like us, you'll wonder, why in God's name do we need this? The answer is a a little piece of paper with Benjamin Franklin's face printed on it. Regular season games don't get that much attention. The teams and fans focus on postseason games in March and April. But if there was a second final happening in December, hallelujah, problem solved. The players can expect to earn one million each for making it to the top eight. That'll motivate them to play better in the games that are usually taken lightly. So the league will have better quality play and competition all year round. Or will it? More games are exactly the opposite of what teams have been asking for. But the end NBA can't hear you. It's too busy stuffing its pockets with $100 bills. Not to mention, caught in the net. The Heat isn't the only team to suffer this season. Many teams have taken players out to rest and face the wrath of the association, but fines have done little to stop them. The Brooklyn Nets were fined for the same offense at almost the same time. On December 15th, the NBA announced they had fined the Nets $25,000 for failing to comply with injury report regulations. The team chose to bench Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Joe Harris, Nick Claxton, Royce O'Neal, and TJ Warren. That's literally almost half the team. We're more curious about who was playing if all of them were out. Still, Brooklyn won the game anyway. That wasn't enough for the NBA, though, and they promptly gave the fine after the game. But teams have been using injury status to rest players for years. That's a loophole the NBA allows willingly. It recognizes that players need a break from time to time, but it won't hesitate to fine you nonetheless. The question is, how long will the team owners let this carry on. If the NBA knows players are faking injuries to get rest, it must know that there's a problem? It seems like
like, unless a player passes out on the court, they're fine with it. Following up, take a load off. But load management will happen, with or without help from the NBA. Teams have been using the injury loophole for years and will probably continue to do so in the future. Owners will never shorten the season because it makes them less money, and player associations just don't have enough power to force them. Even if a shorter season means better quality games, this is one scenario where quantity always trumps quality, at least for the owners. For the rest of us, we just have to suffer through it. It's also unlikely that the NBA will be able to curb the use of this loophole to rest players, unless they want to hire 30 independent doctors that'll go and investigate any minor report to confirm it's true, we doubt anything will change. That's assuming they can do such a thing in the first place. Steph Curry popped his shoulder and is out of the Christmas showcase. Anthony Davis has an injured foot, and Devin Booker has pulled his hamstring. Now, we all know these coaches are thinking about how much rest they can give their players to make sure they are A-OK -okay by March. The only way to do that right now is to fake an injury and miss a few games. Simple. So why does the league throw hissy fits every time the players do the logical thing? If you don't care about the players' health, at least let them take matters into their own hands. But the league has always been ridiculous. Don't believe us? Check these stories out. Moving on, stick it out. The NBA has a history of fining players for small things. Virtually anything can be seen as unsportsmanlike and earn you a hefty fine. As if playing the game wasn't stressful enough, they gotta watch out for the league, too. Take, for instance, the time Dwight Howard was fined. He was known for having fun on the court and just goofing around, but this time, his fun cost him a little too much. The man simply stuck his tongue out at the public. That's it. He did it to tease the fans of the opposing team, and they were clearly annoyed. But since he did it with the clear intention of getting a response, the league wasn't laughing. They said his actions were of a sexual nature and fined him $35,000. Can you imagine? 35 k Gone. Like that. It's a loony town over here. In the same vein, they fined Tyrus Thomas, too. He was at the top of his game and simply said that the dunking contest was like free money for him. But the NBA was like, okay, no money for you. They fined him $10,000 for unsportsmanlike like conduct. We mean, the man was simply stating facts. There was no need to get so pressed about it. Instead of $16,000, the man got only $6,000 in winnings. So much for free money. Lastly, stating facts. The craziness has no end. The further back you go, the fewer the things make sense. It seems it's all about what the NBA's vibes are. If the vibes are off, you best believe you'll get a fine, bestie. The Minnesota Timberwolves have been struggling for a while. The inconsistent leadership and problems at the top management have really affected the team. Since Kevin Garnett became MVP, the team has been lackluster. That explains why team owner David Kahn had high hopes when he acquired Michael Beasley. But two years later, the players failed to save the team. Kahn's growing frustration with him was clear in an interview when he said that the player was too immature and unprofessional. He also stated that Beasley smoked too much weed. That sent the NBA into a frenzy and they fined the man $50,000. We mean, again, he was just stating the facts. Where's the lie in any of it? The poor man had to deal with Beasley and the fine, too. Sometimes the fines make sense, but are just too hilarious, though. Like the time J.R. Smith got a $50,000 fine for untying his opponent's shoes. Yep, you heard that right. Smith was known to goof around, and sometimes he took it too far. Despite his coach's warning, he untied a player's shoes to gain the advantage. It's safe to say, people were not happy. His coach gave him a good lecture, and he obviously had to pay the fine, but it was still a hilarious moment, though. Maybe they could have reduced the fine, because it made everybody laugh? That's it for today's video. Do you think the regular season needs to be shortened? Let us know in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back soon with another video.